Welcome back to the channel. I'm really proud to announce a new sponsor. This is Studio Form Creative, which I've shown on the channel, funny enough, for many, many years now. This is your one-stop shop for all of your comfort needs for many different VR headsets. For example, they've got some new pad sets for the Big Screen Beyond version 2. Made with super soft memory foam, these pads make a fantastic upgrade over your standard foams. And the headphone covers are a really nice touch. Don't forget, I've got a nice 5% discount code, which you can find in the notes below. As you've probably seen from this channel, they also have a full range of different comfort mods. For example, the Pimax Crystal, which is a very large headset. It really transforms your experience with the crystal when using their Apache strap and balancer kits as well as spacers to make sure that both your head, your neck and your eyes are super happy. Please do check the link in the description below for all things Studio Form Creative. Right, let's crack on with today's video. Welcome back to the channel. We're going to compare the RTX 4090 with the RTX 5090 using the Big Screen Beyond version 2 in DCS World. And the results are very interesting indeed, and in many ways, I'm quite surprised by them. Now the PC that's going to be used for this test is a powered by MSI VR Flight Sim Extreme AMD system. That's right folks, Stormforce have collaborated with the channel and you can get £300 off this beautiful PC now. So make sure to use my voucher code, which is on the screen now, that's not affiliated by the way. And to sweeten the deal even more, Stormforce are going to throw in £100 worth of extras, including a very nice MSI Sonic keyboard and USB neon light. So you're basically saving £400 here. Anyway, on to the specs of the PC. This is an AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3D CPU because I've now changed to AMD for the first time in absolutely years. We're using 64GB of Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR5 memory using, of course, the MSI RTX 5090 as well. As you can see, it's an absolutely gorgeous PC, especially with that Vortex King 95 Pro case. Now it goes without saying that I'm going to use the same PC, same conditions, same VR settings, everything exactly the same as much as I possibly can. Even the room temperature I've kept exactly the same as much as possible in an effort just to try and get some really accurate results. But please bear in mind, I'm certainly no benchmarker and this is the best I can do and I hope it's useful to you. For example, I did mess up one thing. I didn't change the RAM speed in the BIOS. This was because I couldn't access the BIOS when I first got the computer. It was an issue with the NVIDIA driver. So let's just go through some of the menu items here. The CPU and GPU info, well that's self-explanatory, as is the RAM. Now the 1% low, that's really important because basically higher is better and it shows basically an average of the worst one percent of the fps recorded in terms of the frame time average well you can see a graph there below and in milliseconds that's the latency basically lower is better and if you think of it as our smoothness slider and i'll go into this in a bit more detail because that's really important um, to talk about in this test Talking of which, we're currently flying in the F-16 over the Persian Gulf map as low and as fast as possible, sort of trying to get the correct path, obviously because I was in VR, but you can see here it's pretty damn close, and we're going to head up to the Burj Khalifa and go right up to the top of the spiral, and then look outside, spin around, and then do the same thing again. Now the settings we're using, you can see on the screen now, is extremely high, okay? Very, very high. I wouldn't really recommend it, especially MSAA at four times with a high resolution headset such as the big screen beyond at 4, 360 per eye. It's a bit mental. So these FPS numbers, they're not normal, okay? Don't start saying in the comments that it's awful performance. That's the point. This is a stress test, <laughs> okay? So now we've got that clear. Let's now try that again, but with DLSS 4. So look at the difference here. Actually, there is definitely a bigger gap in performance between the 4090 and 5090 here. And at times it could be as much as 80 to 90%. Let me know in the comments. But here, look at the frame timing again. We're getting 14 milliseconds versus 26 milliseconds. That's a big deal in VR. 
And this is why I'm narrating this video instead of putting some nice music over the top because I need to tell you about the experience in VR. It is way smoother and that's the same even in Microsoft Flight Simulator as well. Both of these tests when looking at the ground and this is something you won't see in the image I don't think anyway and you just have to look at the numbers you just have to trust me folks that it is a lot smoother and that shows in definitely the frame time but just the general feel is something that I can't really measure it's just the way it feels in the headset you can just tell it's a lot more fluid now don't get me wrong folks I would prefer to use DCS world with eye tracking but there's really no point in showing that in this test because I think that will distort the overall raw performance in this case, we're using the big screen beyond without any eye tracking and just seeing what kind of results we get. And I think it's quite interesting. For this next test, we're going to go on the carrier. And this is the super carrier module, which is known to be quite a PC breaker sort of test as well. We are also back using MSAA now and not DLSS. That's important because I'm now getting the raw clarity of that big screen beyond version 2, which by the way in DCS world absolutely rocks with that field of view. Once again, it's about 25 frames per second versus about 38 frames per second. Pretty decent performance, I would say. Very much so compared to MSFS. Hmm, interesting that one. So for the last test, we've got some boots on the ground. We've got some tanks and all sorts of things. We are in the Apache very very low in the Mariana map which again is known to be a very difficult map and these are the results we're not running DLSS in fact I only run it once for that particular test with the F-16 back to back which definitely makes a big difference and with DLSS 4 it looks better again than MSFS so I would probably uh, for me run DLSS 4 with high settings because I'm getting 75 frames per second easily which is the native refresh rate of the big screen beyond and look at this, we've got 1% lows, 22 frames per second versus 30 frames per second with the 5090. That's good because it's higher. And then in terms of frame time average, it's 40 versus 26. That's definitely enough of a jump to notice in VR, especially when you're this low to the ground. So before we finish this test, I just want to say I'm not trying to sell you a 5090, but I'm just showing you the results based upon two different GPUs. And I think for those who can afford it, it's definitely worth it. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.